Hi, Michael Church. Hope you guys had a really good week. I uh, hope you had some time to think about uh, what it looks like to live out what we talked about last week. Uh, we talked about how God is ascending God <clears throat> and he is sending us to where we work, live, play, and go to school. That basically where you're at during the week is no accident. You're there as citizens of the kingdom of God to be able to communicate the real reign in Christ in everyday spaces of life. And so I hope you had some time to kind of kick that around a little bit and in your head and kind of start to think about what does that look like? Because that's the, the logical next step is once you accept the fact that God is ascending God and that he has sent you to where you work, live, play, go to school, you're, he's using your interests to communicate his kingdom. You are showing people what it looks like to be followers of Christ wherever you go. And when you accept that God has sent you there, the next logical thing to say is, well, what does it look like to really live out uh, kingdom values? Okay, because that's basically what we're doing. When you become a Christian, you become a Christ follower, you become part of the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit indwells you. And at that point, you are now part of a new kingdom. You're not just a citizen on this earth. You're not just a uh, a citizen of the United States, uh, citizen of Amarillo, Texas, Borger, Fritch, wherever you may be, you are not just a citizen of those locales. You are a citizen in the kingdom of God. And you are trying to show people what it's going to look like in the future when we all live with King Jesus together here on earth as he creates a new heaven and earth. Kind of a tall order. And so it's like, how do you do that? Well, I think Jesus showed us in Matthew chapter 22, First thing we're going to do is look at verses 37 through 40, and then we're going to look over at another instance where the same, these same words are spoken, but actually by someone else in Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 28, or excuse me, starting in verse 25. So I'm going to read both of those to you, and then we're going to get into a little bit about what it looks like to live out the rule and reign of Christ in the everyday spaces of life. So starting in Matthew chapter 22, Verse 37, he, he says, uh, <clears throat> someone came up to him and asked him, teacher, which commandment is in the law is the greatest? That actually is, starts verse 36. And he said to him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend upon these two commands. Now think about verse 40 a little bit in detail there. All the law and the prophets, everything in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, everything that was commanded throughout there, the books of the law, the Torah as we knew of it, okay? All of that, everything there hangs on two commandments. Love God with everything you got and love your neighbor as yourself, okay? And so again, that doesn't really tell us how you do that, uh, but it tells us that it's important. But in Luke chapter 10 we actually get a little glimpse of what that may look like. Starting in uh, verse 25 of Luke chapter 10, it says this, Just then, an expert in the law stood up uh, to test him, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What, did, uh, what is written in the law, he asked him. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, he told him. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus took up the question and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him, beat him up, and fed, and fled, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite, when he arrived at that place, saw him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan on his journey came up to him, and when he saw the man, he had compassion. He went over to him and banded his, bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil, uh, olive oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out a denarii and gave it to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra you spent. Which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The one who showed him mercy, he said. Then Jesus told him, Go and do the same. To love our neighbor as ourself is to show the love and the mercy of God. I think it's fascinating that he didn't that when asked which of these do you think 
uh, was a neighbor uh, to this man that had fallen into the hands of sinners, those who beat him up. Uh, he didn't say, you know, the one that took care of him or anything like that. He said, the one who showed him mercy. Think about that a second. He showed him mercy. Also in that passage of scripture, it says, when the Samaritan came along, he had compassion upon him. All right. To love your neighbor as yourself takes a certain perspective, a perspective of caring for people in a way that is best for them and reflects the values of Jesus, showing mercy when you could show judgment, uh, showing compassion when you could show indifference, uh, showing care when you could show indifference. All right. A lot of times when you'll, you'll find out that people aren't so much impressed by your actions as they are just your interest in them, what they're going through in their life, what issues they have in their life. When you sit down with someone, what is the first thing you talk about? Is it you talk about your interests where you're trying to establish yourself in the conversation and how much you know? Or are you asking questions about that person, getting to know that person and what they're about? You know, what it boils down to, this is not an insignificant passage of scripture that we just kind of go, okay, well, we got to love everybody. It says to love your, the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Okay, that's what it says in Matthew. That's what Jesus' words were. The expert in the law responded, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Okay? And so putting everything you've got into loving God, that should pour out of that a love for your neighbor and a care about your neighbor. Now, if you're staying in a college dorm, that's a care about all the people that you come into contact with during the day. It doesn't have, your neighbor is not just somebody that lives uh, where you're at. If you live in that college dorm, those people around you that live around you, they're neighbors. But so is the person that sits next to you in class or the person you work with at your job or the person that you hang out with when you do your favorite hobby. Okay. Because notice that Jesus, you know, we tend to associate the word neighbor with proximity of living. They live close to me. All right. But Jesus says this man was a neighbor to someone he had never met before. Okay. And so showing the mercy of God, showing the compassion of God, showing the grace of God in everyday life toward other people. It's not about, uh, I only listen to a certain kind of music. I don't cuss. I don't drink. I don't, I go to church every Sunday. Those are all good things. If those fall within your convictions, do them. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to listen to other types of music, you know, all those things I just mentioned, those can go either way for Christians. They're not necessarily the mark of a Christian, but what they boil down to is they should all be done out of conviction and not out of a self-righteousness. And as the way we communicate the gospel to people is a lot about our attitude toward mercy, grace, compassion, and love. Okay. See, the challenge for us in everyday life is to see everything through a Jesus filter. Okay. If you go to you see the guys like if you like to watch professional sports, it's hard to get around professional sports without a lot of the social justice involved. I know people that have shut out professional sports altogether. They won't watch it because they're mad at the people that are expressing their opinion. Okay. See, try to see those people through a Jesus filter. If you disagree with that, look at the people that are protesting through a Jesus filter, the professional athletes, the kneelers, the people that are using their platform. Uh, you go to a secular movie, you just go to a movie or something, and maybe it's a little bit questionable. You know, it's hard to go to a movie these days without seeing something that's anti-Christian. See it through a Jesus uh, filter. How can I communicate the gospel? How would I communicate the gospel in that situation? Or what is the theme they're communicating, and how would I counter that with the gospel in a loving and gracious way? You know? Or maybe it's just, you know what? I'm just going to try to show the love and grace of God to people. That doesn't mean you don't take a stand. That doesn't mean you let people run over you. It means you love people first. You show them grace and mercy first. You understand what they're going through. You have a little bit of empathy for their life because you found out enough about it to know that they are going through some heavy stuff and that you're going to try to help them walk through that. Loving your neighbor as yourself is about placing the values of the kingdom of God and Jesus himself before you. That's really what it boils down to. And so what I want you to do today is just ponder what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. 
to see everything in life through a Jesus filter, wanting to know how you can communicate the kingdom of God through that opportunity, showing people what it looks like to love, to follow Jesus. Consider that. And what we're going to do after this, kind of set up what God's ascend, you know, ascending God and he's a missional God and he's sending us out. We're all disciple makers to be sent out to make disciples. We've established that and this loving our neighbors ourselves is the way we do that. And then subsequent lessons from now on, we're going to look at the book of James. And book of James is kind of Christianity 101. And we're going to look at the book of James through a Jesus filter. You'll find that the way you look at scripture, the perspective you take towards scripture, will change the way you see it. And what I want you to prepare you for next week, and why I want you to really think about what it means to love God with everything you got, and then love your neighbors yourself, the reason I want you to really consider all that is because then that shapes our perspective of how we interpret the rest of Scripture. And so I want you to think about that a little bit. Bounce that around. Talk about it. And the next week, we're going to dive into the book of James. We're going to be hitting select chapters in the book of James. We'll, look, we'll start off in James chapter 1. And uh, we're going to be looking through what it really means to live out this Christian life in a way that is about making disciples and loving our neighbor as ourself because God has sent us into these areas. And we're trying to live out the rule and reign of Christ to declare that in the everyday spaces of life to make disciples of Jesus. So kick that around a little bit. Went a little long today. Sorry about that. But this is a thick subject, man. I could talk on it forever. If you have any questions about that, I want you to hit me up. Look me up on Facebook. My name is Jeff Parsons. You can talk to me there. Send me a message. Uh, I'm the executive director of Mission Amarillo. You can send me an email at jeff at missionamarillo.org if you have any questions. But right now, kick this around a little bit, and next week we'll pick up in the book of James and talk about uh, what it looks like to love our neighbors ourselves, to make disciples uh, by looking at the book of James. And we're going to look at that through a Jesus filter, a, a filter of loving God with everything we got and loving our neighbors ourselves. Thanks, guys. See you next week.